Part 2 of Unit 3's Study Guide Review, Number 16, Sketch Graphs with Positive Slopes. So you go down from the bottom left and up to the right. With a negative slope, you start in the top left and you're going down, it's like downhill. Zero slope is when it's a horizontal line and undefined is when it is a vertical line. Number 17. Draw a graph of y equals 1 third x minus 2. Start with your negative 2 on the y-axis. Your slope is 1 over 3. Go up 1 to the right 3. And then draw your line. Number 18. Which of these sets of data matches the graph? Well, we start at negative 1 for our y-intercept. So when x is 0, y is negative 1. It can't be that one. It's going to be either this one or this one. My slope is negative 2 over 1. Here I'm increasing 1 each time and I am decreasing 3, but right here there's no constant rate of change. Here I'm adding 1 each time and for the y's I'm taking away 2 each time, so that's negative 2 over 1. That is the correct graph for the correct table for this graph. Number 19, draw the function y equals negative x. There is no y-intercept, so you're going to start at 0 or at the origin. Your slope, this is the same thing as negative 1x, so you're going to go down 1 to the right 1, and that is your graph. Number 20. Which sketches illustrate y equals x? So that's starting at the origin and cannot be either of those two. And your slope is positive 1. This is a negative slope, so it has to be this one. Al drives a cab. He charges $4 to pick you up, so that's your initial fee, plus $2 for every mile. That's your slope. He uses the equation y equals 2x plus 4. Explain what the variable x means in this situation. If $2 per mile x represents how many miles Al drives you. Number 22, draw the graph y equals negative x plus 1. You're going to start at the y-axis. That is your b. And your slope is negative 1. So you're going to go down 1 to the right 1. And that's your graph, 23. Which graph increased in the fastest, in cost at the fastest rate? So the one that increased the most, that has the steepest slope, is going to be number 2. Which graph increased in cost at the slowest rate? The lowest smallest decline or slope is going to be 3 and which two have similar rates these two are pretty close in rates so that's going to be 3 and 4 it's pretty close to being the same line they just start at different places 24 draw the graph of each equation y equals negative 2x plus 2 you're going to start at 2 for your y-intercept negative 2 is your slope so from your y-intercept go down 2 to the right one and put a point, connect your points, and that's your graph. 25, write the equation of this graph. We start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have two points start from the left. Rise over run. That's 3 over 1. So your equation is y equals 3x plus 5. All right, the graph shows the height, uh, the height and shoe size of men. So their shoe size depends on their height. So shoe size is our y. Height is our x. Our height ranges from 66 to 78. So 66. 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. I do not have enough to do that, so I'm going to go by 2, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76, 
six, seven, eight. Our shoe size ranges from eight to eight and a half, so we go by length. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. For size height, sixty-seven inches, they wear an eight and a half. So we go halfway between sixty-six and sixty-seven, and halfway between eight and nine. For seventy, they wear a nine and a half. So we go to the right seventy, and up halfway between nine and ten. For a seventy thirty and a half inches, so close to seventy four, they wear an eleven. For seventy five inches, they wear a twelve. For seventy eight inches, they wear a thirteen. And for sixty six inches, they wear an eight. Draw the line of best fit to predict the height of a man if he has a shoe size of ten and a half. So, what's, what is the equation of line of best fit? We've got to draw a line. About right there. We're starting at zero. We're starting at because right here is eight, so right there would be six. So we're starting at six. That's all it does. We're going up one to the right from sixty-six to sixty-eight. So that's two. But 1 over 2, y equals 1 half x plus 6. What is the height of a man who is expected to wear a 10 and a half shoe? Okay, as you can see, the screen just completely changed. So what we figured out, <laughs> we have some issues with our original table. I'm actually not going to require you guys to do this problem because this problem is complicated because our y-intercept is actually going to be a negative number. I originally graphed starting with 8 right here and 66 right here. There, is, there was a 66 gap right here and only 8 right here. It did not add up to be equivalent, so whenever the graph crossed, touching the 7 instead of 6. I put 6 on the previous slide, but it should be 7. Whenever it touched that, that was actually not accurate. So we regraphed it. We spread everything out, started at 0 on both sides, regraphed it, and realized that our graph was going to cross somewhere down here in the negative. So what I did was I took two points from the table that were also on the graph. I took 66, 8 and 78, 13 and I solved that way to find my slope and my y-intercept. When I did that, I got that my slope was 5 twelfths, but since that was really close to the one half that I got whenever I originally graphed it, I kept that one half. Then I plugged in one of the numbers 7813, and I solved right here for my y intercept and got a negative 26. The negative 26, when I plugged it in for 10 and a half shoe size, equals 1 half x minus 26, solving for how tall this guy is. I added 26 to both sides, and I got 36 and a half. Well, then I multiplied by 2 on both sides to get rid of this one half, which of course is the same thing as adding 36 again, and that gave me 73. That is pretty close to what my table looks like and to what my graph looks like. So the equation would actually be y equals 1 half x minus 26 and the expected height would be about 73 inches. What is the correlation of shoe size compared to the height of man? The taller the man, the bigger the shoe size, there is a positive correlation. However, 
the, te- the question that is on the test about the line of best fit, the line of best fit is given to you. It will not be this complicated. So do not worry about this problem and do not let it stress you out because you will not have to do anything this complex. Let's look at the next problem. Fill in the blanks to make true statements about the graph shown. The slope of the line is negative. We're going down two to the right two. So that is negative one. The smaller triangle and the larger triangles shown are similar. And the simplified ratio, the rise run of the triangle, is negative one. So the slope of the line is negative. The triangles are similar, and the simplified ratio is negative one. Look at 28. The table below shows the answers of students by grade who eat broccoli. Use the results shown below to answer the questions. So we have students in three different grades, and we have whether they eat broccoli or they don't eat broccoli. So we have eighth graders and sixth graders, and yes, they eat broccoli, no, they do not eat broccoli. So sixth grade, eighth grade, yes, no. For the eighth graders, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are eighth graders. One, two, three, four, five of them are sixth graders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them said yes. One, two, three, four of them said no. There are twelve total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good, we're correct. And five plus seven is twelve. So of six graders who said yes, that is one, two, six graders who said no, one, two, three, two plus three is five. So for eight graders who said yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight graders who said no, one, So we filled in. Now to find the frequencies. The table below shows the answers of students by grade who eat broccoli, and we're finding the relative frequency for these totals. There are, out of the sixth grade, two out of five eat broccoli, three out of five do not. And we'll divide these in just a second. Six out of seven eighth graders eat broccoli. One out of seven do not. So let's divide these. Three divided by five gives us 60%. Two divided by five gives us 40%. Six divided by five gives us 86%. 1 divided by 7 leaves us with 14%. Write three observations about bivariate data in the two-way table. So three observations. We can observe that there are more students in the 8th grade like broccoli the not. It's very close for sixth graders. Only a few more students. In sixth grade, like broccoli. And between 8th grade and 6th grade, 8th graders like broccoli more 